So the person who I really felt bad for was Kwame. Um, because Kwame, when he came into the league, he was the best person in the draft, hands down. It wasn't close. I saw it with my own two eyes. They brought in all the top big men, right? This is right at the Verizon Center. They brought them all in. He went against Tyson Chandler. He went against Eddie Curry, you know, and he destroyed all of them. Like, it wasn't even close. Like, it wasn't even close. And, you know, coming there and having the pressure of, of playing next to MJ and really Doug Collins. Like, you know, I mean, Kwame won't say it now, but I can say it because I was there. Doug Collins, you know, it was almost like he had a personal vendetta against Kwame. You know, like I would text him after sometimes. I'd be like, are you all right, man? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know why he's going at you so hard. Like, he wanted to almost take his confidence. But it was really, if things didn't go right, he wanted to blame somebody and not blame MJ. That's what I think. So Kwame got all the blame, you know, and it was just – it was messed up, but, you know, M but playing with MJ, Kwame would, would watch MJ and watch his habits, watch the things that he's doing and stuff like that. But with Doug Collins in that situation, I really felt bad for him. That's interesting, and I've really never heard anybody say that. Maybe they don't have, you know, the, the balls, for lack of better terms, to say that about Collins in that situation. And also a lot of people don't know because they weren't there. You know what I mean? A lot of people just look at it and say, well, you know, Kwame was the number one pick. And, you know, he didn't pan out the way you think a number one pick would pan out. And I was like, well, there's a whole lot more involved in it than that. You know, if he, if he was the number two pick and was in a different situation, we just saw a completely different quality. You know, when, when Tyson Chandler went to the Bulls, and of course, he's a fantastic player still playing now, but he didn't have any pressure. He didn't have MJ next to him. He didn't have Doug Collins looking to blame him for everything. He could just relax and play. And if Kwame had that kind of a situation, you would have seen a completely different quality crazy to think what was what was MJ and Kwame's relationship like I'm sorry to keep asking you all these questions about MJ but very very interesting you know stuff here oh well I mean from what I saw it was um, MJ just wanted to win he just had a competitor so that's all he was focused on um and you know his relationship with Kwame looked all right to me you know looked like he you know pushed him just as much as he pushes everybody else so I, I don't think that MJ was the problem with that I think it was more Doug Collins but I think Doug Collins also, you know, he wanted to protect MJ and protect the, it. There's just so much more going on. So Kwame had to take the blame for everything. And it was just, it was a messed up situation for an 18 year old kid to come into. You know, it really was. It, but, and it, and it, probably, it probably scarred him for the rest uh, of his career. Uh, I, I mean, did not. I mean, cause you don't see that. And I wonder if they're gonna show this in the documentary, but really the way that, you know, I mean, it was just, I don't even know how to really explain it the, some of the times where things wouldn't even be Kwame's fault, but it would just be all on him. And it, it was just like, that's why I said sometimes I would text him. Me and Kwame, we we're like the closest on the team. Like, that was my guy. And a lot of it was sometimes I would see it. I was like, man, that's not fair. This is not fair. Why are y'all doing him? 